Hi, my name is Hassan Diab. I'm a Canadian citizen, a sociology scholar, and I live in Ottawa with my wife, Rania Twaili, and our children, Jad and Jenna. I'd like to tell you my story if you haven't heard it yet. In 2008, France requested my extradition for my alleged involvement in the 1980 bombing of a synagogue in Paris. I was arrested by the RCMP. The standard for extradition is so low that Canada hands citizens over based on the flimsiest of evidence that would not be accepted in a Canadian criminal trial. Extradition law allows unsworn allegations to be presumed reliable and to go unchallenged and places the burden to prove that any evidence is manifestly unreliable on the person being accused. At the same time, the accused is forbidden from calling evidence in their defense. It is so difficult to defend oneself that lawyers have a joke there is only one question in an extradition hearing. Window C or Heil. The case against me stood on unreliable, unsourced intelligence. Experts testified about France's troubling history of using intelligence obtained through torture and terrorism trial. Multiple handwriting experts testified the handwriting evidence implicating me was deeply flawed. Some of the samples used for comparison even belonged to my ex-wife. The extradition judge Robert Maranger said that the evidence against me seems illogical and was convoluted, very confusing, with conclusions that are suspect. He added that France presented a weak case and the prospects of conviction in the context of a fair trial seem unlikely. Justice Maranger said that he couldn't consider the expert evidence on the unreliability of the handwriting analysis. Mm. What? Even though I should have been freed since we had shown the evidence was manifestly unreliable, the judge disagreed and said he felt forced by the law to order my extradition. The court of appeal said that the judge was wrong in not ruling on the evidence, but they wouldn't intervene with his decision. The Supreme Court refused to hear my appeal without reason. Every single level of Canadian courts failed Hassan. The next day, I was extradited to France. Although my daughter and I were promised that we could see my husband before he was extradited, they moved him very early in the morning and we were unable to say goodbye or bring him money or clothes. Although the law stipulates that Canadians are only to be extradited to face trial, I spent more than three years in prison in near solitary confinement and without charge while the French judges were investigating my case. The French investigative judges found that the fingerprint comparison was a key reason to release me. They described the unsourced intelligence as full of contradictions and inaccuracies, and they verified that I was not even in France when the bombing occurred. The judges ordered my release eight times, but the prosecutors blocked it every single time. The investigative judges finally closed their investigation with no charges, so I was released and returned to Canada in January 2018. The French prosecutors have appealed this decision. I was finally reunited with my family, including my son, who was born while I was detained in France. I missed the first three years of his life. My dad died a few months before my release. He would never know that I would ever be free. I want to thank my wife, Rania, the Hassan Diab Support Committee, my lawyers, and all the people who have supported me over the years without whom I wouldn't be back home today. But the fight is not over. CBC recently revealed that a Canadian government lawyer asked France to send fingerprints of the bombing suspect for comparison with my prints because such comparison would be very powerful if not conclusive to get me extradited. The fingerprints were found not to match, but this was never disclosed to the court. In its 2008 extradition request to Canada, French investigators stated that police did not find any usable fingerprints on the hotel registration form. But court documents recently obtained by the CBC show that France did find a usable fingerprint on the hotel form in 2007. And that comparison with my own prints came up negative. 
CBC also revealed that a Canadian government lawyer was worried that the case against me was about to collapse. He wrote a secret memo urging French officials to produce a new handwriting analysis against me and requested a lengthy adjournment of the case. In the meantime, he kept telling the Canadian judge that he had no knowledge of France's plans despite having secretly directed them. The justice minister refused to order a public inquiry into my wrongful extradition. Instead, she appointed a career prosecutor to do a behind-the-scenes review of my case. The report was given to the justice minister in May 2019, but was only made public in July after much outcry. Shockingly, the report found that the Department of Justice lawyers broke no rules. The review provided neither accountability nor did it ensure that no other person will suffer similar injustices due to Canada's flawed extradition law. A public inquiry is necessary to be able to compel documents and testimonies to examine France's actions and to hopefully hold people accountable and reform the extradition law. Only a public and transparent judicial inquiry can get to the cold truth. We need to make sure that Canadians are protected and that what I went through never happens again. I'm calling for a public inquiry into my case and reform of the extradition law. Join us.